Who do you think Europa League or needs Europa League more, United or Chelsea? We know one thing for sure: Chelsea are not managed well. Like the ownership they have are still learning how to own a football club. Manchester United just got into a new good ownership, but they will take a lot of time to flush out whatever shit they already have in house. So on this point of Europa League and the fact that two clubs have new. ownership who do you think europa league or needs europa league more united or chelsea given their whole situation dynamic club building process everything uh i it's just three points between them so and chelsea have easy fixtures united have arsenal so anything can happen they have a better united goal defense united have easy fixtures apart from arsenal there it's, it's there yeah it's I did this calculation and I see no reason, no way how Chelsea is going to finish above United. Chelsea yeah, right now. They, could, if they wait, wait. They have like six. They're six Chelsea. points behind, and but they're only like one game behind. Like, okay, they have played one game less. So they have one have, game left. Chelsea have Spurs and Brighton. Oh, screw Brighton, man! What Brighton is, is not the team, man. Yeah. <laughs> they have Nottingham Forest away, which is going to be probably their hardest fixture because mm-hmm. of, of the contest involved. And you know, today Nottingham Forest was so well. I think that game they'll turn up even more. So Tottenham and Nottingham Forest is not easy by any stretch. West Ham also, I wouldn't put it past Chelsea. I mean, I don't think it's a guaranteed Chelsea win. So yeah. the only place that I can see them get six points is Brighton and Chelsea. But if you go to Man United. I can see them get jammy three points against Crystal Palace next week, and I can see no, them Crystal beating Palace team. Crystal Palace is not an easy team right now. I know, but I'm, I'm they're gonna get that jammy three points. Crystal Palace are just transitioning into a ball playing possession based team, and they're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna commit mistakes, I and to United, they're gonna play in United's hand basically of how they play, and that's where I think they're gonna get three. Brighton also, I'm gonna think they're gonna get three. So I feel like United will finish above. But who uh, needs Chelsea. it more? Who needs it more? United needed more. You think uh, so? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they need it more, need but more. I. For the pod. I mean, need what, need, 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 need as in? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think I would love to force the other two guys watch conference. I wish they finish in the yeah. Champions League. That, more, exactly. I less. just want them to be in the Conference League and then just get yeah, suffered just, through it. We right? want to do the yeah. Conference League. Just United to win. Yeah. And Chelsea would need Europa League just so that they, all of their squad can play at least one game each every now and then. So all of their like twenty five, three people, whatever they have in their squad. But yeah, I think Chelsea. See United in the Conference League. Hopefully, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I think yeah. for me, I think Chelsea needs it more because United. I don't know. They can still anything in Champions League is kind of like a failure for them. But for if they get Europa League, I think it gives them real wings to add the project mm-hmm. and bring the fan base back on at least on the surface yeah. or like just below the surface. You know, I think that club is so dull right now. And I love it. Long may it continue. Yeah, but honestly, Chelsea can do with the season with nothing. Also, they can do with the yeah, season with yeah. nothing. Because anyway, they have like a lot of. I feel like United getting into this new ownership, getting probably getting a new manager. Hopefully for them, they're gonna want more fixtures. They're gonna want the new manager would want Europa League to you know try out the youngsters. They have to yeah. try a lot of things out next season. They have to be on like trial and error sort of like a season. <laughs> and this is where they have to. They need more games. They need more inconsequential games. Yeah. I think another factor is FFP. I think from an FFP standpoint, both the clubs are kind of like in a turmoil. United are in a United pretty bad situation. United, United are never, good. Ever, they're they're right. Even everything they're good. They are good. It, It is, it is, but they still haven't been able to buy player. Like you remember, last January they got mm-hmm. Beghorst on loan. This time so the they reason, got. The whole reason for that Abdubal was because the ownership, the ownership was in like a limbo, and mm-hmm. they didn't want to commit money. They didn't want to commit things. Anyway, United oh, was in okay. debt. Now yeah. Ratliff coming in, you know, he has his. He is using the revenue to actually. He will generate money, and he will give a war chest to United. Yes. Now they now they have a clear ownership. They have an investors coming in, so it's now it's going to be clear. Now they're going to buy. Players. The only good thing they can do right now for their club is get a good manager, and yeah. that will put United somewhere above up there because they have good background staff now. They have really good directors up front. They have every everything has changed at that club. Yeah. So if a good manager, a, a really smart, you know, like a Klopp, a guy who can connect the fan base to the team, mm-hmm. is there and connect the whole structure to the team up to down. That kind of like a presence is needing. That kind of because which Ten Hag is not. He's not yeah. like Ten Hag is nothing. And I okay. think Tuchel will be perfect there. But Before yeah. moving on to Chelsea, I just want one topic. My favorite topic, I think, two of my favorite players from these respective clubs. Their star strikers signed in January, one for seventy-two million, one for thirty-six. Nico Jackson versus Hoyland, who is having a better season. Not talking about potential, not talking about the future. Just who's had a better season, or have they been both flops, both hits, or both like whatever? Any opinion? I 
think Holland is marginally better compared to Nicholas Jackson. I think maybe it's recency bias. Maybe it's all those the misses against City and and all that's happening with against Arsenal and everything. Maybe that's kind of playing in my head right now. But I've never seen a striker so dysfunctional in front of goal like Nicol- Nicholas Jackson, and I see Nunes every day. So I, I I don't understand where the hesitation comes from, where the reluctance to shoot comes from, and it it's something which kind of blows my mind. Like and the worst part is he gets into those positions he makes those runs he yeah. tries he gets into the position and then after that point it's done the brain capacity is gone you don't know what to do with the football you don't know where the goal is you don't know who's behind you ahead of you you don't know you don't even have the strength to pass the ball that one chance he had against City on the FA Cup semi-final right I think he went through and he could have chipped the goalkeeper he didn't do that fine he kind of yeah. went sideways to the goalkeeper and he fucked it up and then the last option for him was to play a normal simple pass to the people who are kind of coming behind him and he couldn't do that properly as well and i think again this is this is where these, these are the things you cannot coach like these are these are the things which you have to have them inherently right and that's where i think i mean because you can make that you can tell a striker to make those runs you can tell them to kind of you know you know uh, work with your uh, midfielders and kind of have this have that connection and everything but these things are something which you have to develop by yourself and i think nicholas jackson doesn't have any of them and coming to ha- holland i think he's not getting enough service with all the dysfunction that's happening within that team maybe with better service because i've seen him i think he had a patch of like six goals in six consecutive games or something like that at least he he showed that he has some potential like he can you know do whatever he want at least like as long as there is service and it, people are kind of and again he obviously is not a hit he's not been a signing a good signing but at first season maybe with the signs he has shown maybe one more season i think we can give him and then judge him but jackson has been a complete calamity man okay like that's I don't agree to it, but Nirav, go ahead. Your opinion on the two? I mean, if you see the stats, Jackson has done marginally better than, actually, better than Holland. But I feel like players who perform in Europe are actually good players. So I feel like Holland has performed in Europe. He scored goals, and in the Champions League, he has that. He is more of like he gives me more hope. like for him in the future Jackson again like Jackson is like he we already have labeled him as a bozo so i can't yeah. see past that anymore i can't see past the fact that he's like a, he's just a bozo who's going to miss chances so kind of like a yeah. burner kind of like s feeling that he gives um Also, I'm that gonna... that penalty farce, right? The whole thing that happened oh, with Palmer, yeah, yeah, yeah. it off. That tells me that this guy is not mature enough right now to to be a player for such a big club. And Hoyland, I think, has that head over him. So that's why Hoyland will probably, if you had to put your money, Hoyland probably going to have a better career. I think I don't disagree with any of you. I think both. To be honest, for me, both of them are in the same boat. Either they are okay signings or they are flops. None of them is one above the other. But I just want to make a case for Nico Jackson, wherein like I think. he's he's basically coming from he was a no name before signing for chelsea right he was good striker playing second fiddle in villarreal for 6 months and he came on a uh, decent price enough like 32 36 million is not that that much for a striker in today's world he's still young and his hold up play and running with the ball is pretty legit like i remember arsenal versus chelsea the only time i've seen someone running past saliba was him doing it in like in the first half and saliba just couldn't deal with it and his cutback kind of hit gabriel and it to the post and then went out so i think he a lot of chelsea's play a lot of chelsea's goal a lot of positioning that cole palmer gets is because of his build up play and his connection between the different zones of the team and that is something that's going for him he does not have a trademark finish and he is a bozo for sure if he can develop his finishing maybe like you know just just practice one sort of finishing like onri did onri had like one finish and he practiced that till he really was dead and then he perfected it so maybe if he can do that yeah sure but i think he's not a total disaster at chelsea he's been he's been whatever but he's not like a total disaster i mean i have a little bit of hope from him 